Hi everyone, hope you are doing well and welcome back to another Q&A video and thank you for all of you who have posted your questions to me on the YouTube community, so let's get started. So first question, a few months back I commented that I will tell you when I get my first job. Now I'm happy to share that I started my career as an associate analyst a few weeks back. Well, congratulations! And can you please tell how to avoid mistakes in your first job and stop feeling bad about it and also how can we grow faster? Well, I say making mistakes in a new job is unavoidable and in fact it's quite necessary for you to be able to learn and that's probably the quickest way to learn to be better at something. So I would even encourage you to make many mistakes and ask many questions and try many new things in your job. I also made many silly mistakes in my first job and but when I think back, that is when I really felt that I grew the most and I learned the most um, in my job. And it sounds a bit cliche, but the most important thing is to learn from those mistakes. Second question, what are some of the biggest challenges you have faced as a data scientist at work? What mindset does one need to overcome them and how do you tackle them? For me personally, I think one of the challenges is to do a machine learning or data science project in a domain area that I have no idea about. And a lot of times I just feel like I'm the dumbest person in the room. I feel completely useless because I have no idea what all these terminologies and how all these business logic works. And the mindset that helped me is to just to get over myself, to be honest, to be curious and ask many questions, even though those questions might seem a little bit too basic and stupid, and always be ready to say you don't know and you don't understand. And I think that really helps um, you have a healthier relationship with learning and with um, dealing with these kind of situations instead of always trying to beat yourself up. Moving on to the next question, based on your experience in the industry, is it possible to build a remote career in data science? Well, I guess it's possible, especially if you already have some working experience and some track records and also some professional network that can help you get new clients. But I guess it's not for everyone, especially you are just starting out. I think it's probably not a viable option, especially nowadays with the AI and all the automation tools, it feels like working remote actually puts you in, in a disadvantaged position because you don't have any human contact with your colleagues, you cannot build effectively your personal network, close friendships and meaningful relationships with your co-workers. So I think for starters, I wouldn't recommend this route. Okay, next question. What do you recommend I target for my first job and what skills do you think I should focus on practicing for interviews and recommended jobs? I've been applying for data analyst positions so far. Thank you in advance. For interviews, I think it's best to focus on learning how to present very well your portfolio and your skills instead of focusing on the specific skills that you can practice because I really think the practicing part of the skills should already be done uh, throughout the process of learning and working on your portfolio, especially if you already have some basic skills in, you know, Excel, Python or R, SQL, data visualization in Tableau or Power BI. So I really don't know what you can focus on on the interviews. Okay, next question. Can you tell us more on your rationale on choosing computer science degree as your further study instead of data science degree? Well, I also debated quite a bit with myself on whether to take a computer science degree or a data science degree. And in the end, I chose to study computer science as my second undergraduate degree because I thought that computer science is a little bit more established field than data science and also a little bit broader and it shows you more the basic and the foundational, the really fundamental skills, really concepts around programming, a lot of things like object-oriented programming, how to write good code and how to really um, organize your code very well. And also besides that, I think a lot of theories in computer science are very helpful to understand a lot of things in machine learning and data science in general. I also really enjoyed some modules, things like cryptography, automata theory, and how computers work. And these things are really interesting to me. So yeah, I think that's why I chose to study computer science. Next question. How do you approach asking people for help regarding work? I often feel like I'm disturbing people or that they'll feel annoyed. So so I spent more time doing or learning it by, by myself. Well, 
I really never feel disturbed by people asking for help at my work, so don't assume that everyone would feel annoyed or disturbed by your questions. And I think the key to asking for help effectively is to ask really specific questions and avoid those generic questions because that may annoy people indeed. It's good if you probably have tried out some approaches that don't work and um, you can show them maybe if you're coding, maybe you can show them the error or if you're using some software and the output is not what you expected. And before asking someone for help, I would always try to investigate the issue by myself or Google the issue to see if I can actually solve the problem. And I think that's a very effective way to develop your own problem solving skills. Okay, next question. I'm currently a med student with interest to data analysis due to my past experiences with clinical research. Where can I integrate both medicine and data analysis into an appropriate career path. Well, I'm not really familiar with the medical field and um, I think generally there are two directions. So one is to go um, into the research direction and the other one is going into industry. And I think for both of these directions, there might not be a specific title that exists that you can look for. So really try to explore some projects in your field or reach out to some people who are doing kind of like similar things that you're trying to do. That is to combine the medical domain expertise with the data analysis part. And I think just like in many other fields, I think we just kind of have to carve our own path and it can be difficult and can be kind of like hard to navigate sometimes but I think if you just keep looking and keep trying and reaching out to other people and look for those the opportunities even small opportunities like small projects that you can do that have kind of like the same combination of skills that you are trying to integrate then I think that's that might be a good start. Okay, next question. Did you overcome imposter syndrome as a data scientist? What would be your advice on overcoming it? Well, not only that I did, but I still am and I will still feel imposter as a data scientist. And I think the most effective strategy is just to acknowledge the feeling of imposter and also to just try to ignore it. Because if you think about it, when you feel imposter, that is when you are putting yourself out of your comfort zone and you are learning new things. And so that is a very positive thing. And so I think imposter is not necessarily a negative thing at all. You don't need to act on it. You don't need to hold on to that feeling and feeling bad for yourself. But really sometimes we just need to get over ourselves and focus on the actual thing that you are doing and try to do it as well as you can or learn it as well as you can and um, try to be uh, useful to other people. So yeah, that's how I deal with my imposter syndrome. <laughs> Next question. Based on your experience and all the open source content available, is a master's in data science worth it for the content nowadays or is it just for the prestige? Well, I think education and degrees in general are worth it but not worth as much as working experience in my opinion. So if you can afford it, I would encourage you to take a degree in parallel with um, working part-time and um, so you can get uh, the best of both worlds. And also try to make use as much of the free content uh, on the internet as possible. The next question is quite interesting. Do you think generative AI could analyze the data and provide insights and could do the work a data scientist and a data analyst does? Well, just a few days ago, ChatGPT Code Interpreter was released and this is a plugin that can run Python code and can download and upload data. And I expect that this could be a very powerful tool also not only for data science people, but also for people outside of the field who can barely do any programming, but now they can also use ChatGPT to do data analysis. So I think the potential is there and there's a possibility that part of our work will be automated by AI. But I think when it comes to really getting the insights and really making conclusions and making decisions, I think that is when human analysts and human data scientists would shine. Also in terms of interpersonal skills, in terms of domain knowledge and our real understanding of the world and how the world works it still cannot be imitated by any AI up to now. So in short, I think that generative AI can 
enhance and automate part of our work, but it's not gonna be able to fully replace a human analyst or a human data scientist. Next question. In your experience, what has been the best approach to get buy-in for data analytics from stakeholders? Well, from my consulting experience, I would say that the best approach is to start with their pain point and to really put yourself into the shoes of the stakeholders and to really think together, to, to think along with them and to really understand what they need to get done but haven't been able to. And so from there, you can think about how data analytics or machine learning can help them achieve their goal um, faster and better and more cheaply. Okay, next question. I sense NLP engineer roles will get redundant with advent of OpenAI slash ChatGPT. What do you think? Well, I don't really feel qualified to give an opinion on this but I guess the roles will still be valuable with probably you will need to adapt to the AI developments a little bit today because maybe now it's good to offer your skills to help people to make better prompts or like, you know, someone said prompt engineering is the best or the most important skills in the 21st century or so. Maybe that's one opportunity to consider. I don't know how true it is, and how viable it is, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite cool. Next question. I know that's not related to data science, but do you love cooking? And what is your favorite dishes? Yes, I love cooking as much as I love good food. Um, I especially love the Vietnamese noodles, the pho, and actually any Vietnamese dishes. Next question. Do you read fiction? If yes, what are your favorites? I read fictions mostly during my teenage years and nowadays not so much anymore. I think my favorite uh, fictions are The Martian and uh, Dune. Okay, what would you say to a 45 years old person who has not experienced computer science but wants to start in data science? I would say don't let your age define who you are and what you can do. I think anything is possible. My dad learned how to use computer and learn Photoshop when he was almost like 50. So I really think that is all about your determination and what you what you believe. I'm bad at coding, but good at core concepts of machine learning and AI. Should I change line of degree or is it possible I will get the hang of it once I start studying coding? I really think that coding is not the hardest part <laughs> at all. Compared to the concepts like the math and statistics, I think Coding is quite intuitive. And I think maybe you can change the mindset a little bit. Instead of learning how to code, you can try to start making projects that use some programming skills. And from there, you can start seeing that you are making useful stuff. You feel more motivated and you start feeling that you can be good at this. All right, some personal questions. How do you rise above the urgent day-to-day -day stuff? I must say I'm really not good at this. Sometimes I manage to finish both the urgent stuff and the necessary priority stuff by sacrificing my sleep. And so this is really a bad deal because it really takes a toll on my, my health and my energy. But nowadays I'm trying to learn to say no more often to urgent things. And also some urgent things are actually not urgent at all. Some people just make it sound like it's urgent, but Really, if you think about it and you've, if you really try to, to understand what is the purpose of this thing and why is it so urgent, you really realize that it's not that urgent. And you can, in most cases, I feel like I can negotiate the deadlines. For example, instead of trying to finish everything on midnight Friday, I would say, okay, I'll just send it out on Monday because really who would work in the weekend to check my work? So yeah, that's what I have learned. Question, are you in a relationship? <laughs> well, it's such a personal question, but um, well, not at the moment. I am still looking for my Prince Charming. This might change in the future, but I really think that the single time has given me the opportunity to really learn about myself and what I really want. And instead of seeing, okay, what the other person wants. So I appreciate the bright side of being single and trying to enjoy it as much as I can. Last question, what is your MBTI type? Mine is INFJ. And I think that explains a little bit to me why I always feel like I'm a paradox, like I'm made up of parts that have incompatible functions or so. I struggle to explain who I am and what I do. If someone come up to me and ask me, what do you do? I would really don't know what to say. And yeah, I'm interested in a lot of things. I feel a lot of things and I want to do a lot of things. 
So that's kind of who I am. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Q&A and thank you for all the great questions and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.